Hello everyone, this is Eunice Liang or Puan Liang. So in this particular video, I'm going to solve uh, a few questions regarding conservation of momentum. So before we actually start with the conservation of momentum, let's have a quick recap on what is conservation of momentum. So over here, conservation of momentum is actually whereby the total momentum before the collision is equal to the total momentum after the collision if there is no external force acting on it. Or in equation term, it's going to be total momentum before collision equals total momentum after the collision. So there's two types of collision, which is elastic collision and inelastic collision. For elastic collision, the total momentum has to be conserved, the total kinetic energy is also conserved, and the total energy is also conserved. In this particular case for KSSM syllabus, all right, how do we identify that it's actually an elastic collision? Okay, for KSSM syllabus, uh, two objects will move separately after colliding with each other. So that is actually an uh, inelastic collision. Okay. So this is actually inelastic collision. Uh, sorry, this is actually elastic collision. Whereby two objects will move separately after colliding with one another. All right. But for inelastic collision, as we can see, the total momentum is conserved, but the total kinetic energy is not conserved. Now, in my video of conservation of momentum, inelastic collision in physics world, well, actually, there's two kinds. One, perfect inelastic collision, whereby object will move together after collision, and normal inelastic collision, whereby the two objects will also move separately after collision. So, um, how to identify whether it's a perfect inelastic or, uh, sorry, whether it's an elastic or inelastic collision if it's moving separately is by calculating the total kinetic energy. But for physics KSSM syllabus, for the SPM level syllabus, the inelastic collision that is being mentioned is actually the perfect inelastic collision whereby two objects will move together. All right, they stick together after colliding with one uh, each other, which means that in elastic collision questions in SPM level, the object will move together after colliding. All right, it sticks together. It has the same velocity after the collision. All right, so that's a quick recap regarding uh, elastic collision and inelastic collision. So let me get a question out and for me to show all of you how to actually solve a question. Give me one quick minute while I screenshot the question and I get it pasted here. Alright, so uh, I've got this one question here for me to start showing to all of you how to solve the question. So the first thing that we have to do is obviously we have to try to analyze the question and then convert the wordings into a symbol. And also uh, for this particular case, because the question already have a pictorial question, so we don't have to draw anything. But let me bring that up bigger and for us to start analyzing. So I'm going to get a highlighter here. Okay, so in this particular case, let's start analyzing. Now, a trolley of mass 3 kg, trolley A mass 3 kg, is moving with velocity 2 meter per second, collides with another stationary trolley B. After collision, trolley A moves with velocity of 0 0.4 meter per second. Well, uh, if the collision is elastic, calculate the momentum of trolley B after collision. Okay, so what do we know? Let's start analyzing. Okay. Now, first thing we know is the mass of trolley A is actually 3 kg. Okay. The initial velocity, since the picture is already uh, drawn out, the sign convention here, we use back the normal sign convention of the graph, which is up positive, down negative, towards the right positive, and towards the left negative. Why do we need this sign convention? Because velocity and momentum is a vector quantity, therefore we actually need to identify the direction so that the symbol is correct. So the initial velocity of trolley A is positive 2 meter per second. All right, then we have a uh, mass of trolley B, which is here, uh, Let's see, mass of trolley B unknown. It's not given to us. 
okay and then after that the initial velocity of trolley b is actually zero zero because it is stationary so zero meter per second okay after that trolley a moves with 0 0.4 meter per second towards the right so that is va equals to 0 0.4 meter per second and we have no idea what is trolley b's final velocity okay so in this particular case all right in this particular case Calculate the momentum of trolley B after the collision if the collision is an elastic collision. Now, elastic collision means trolley A and B is moving separately after the collision. Okay, now, before we start to write the uh, equations for conservation of momentum, we have to understand elastic collision. Elastic collision means total momentum is conserved, total kinetic energy is conserved. Now, we don't use total energy con uh, is conserved in calculation because we need to consider a lot of stuff. So to simplify our working and to simplify the concept for elastic collision, two things we have to understand, that is total momentum conserved and total kinetic energy conserved. Now, number two, we have to also understand that we have two unknowns that we do not know. The mass of object B and also the final velocity of object B. In mathematics, if we have two unknowns, we need two equations. So this uh, two equation obviously comes from the total momentum conserved and the conservation of kinetic energy. So let's start with the first one. Right? Let me readjust this okay putting the questions up on my head all right so let's start with calculation the first one okay the first one whereby we will talk about total uh, conservation of momentum so conservation of momentum for the first one is total momentum before collision is equals to total momentum after collision okay total momentum after so in this particular case we have two objects so we have momentum of object a before collision plus momentum of object b before collision is equals to momentum of object a after collision plus momentum of object B after collision. So therefore, MAUA plus MBUB equals to MAVA plus MBVB. All right. Object of, uh, sorry, the initial velocity of object B is zero. So I'm just going to let this become zero. So mass of A is 3, initial velocity of A is 2, positive 2. So mass of A is uh, 3 kg again, final velocity of A is 0 0.4, plus mass of B unknown, velocity of B also unknown, so we're just going to leave that as unknown. I'm shifting the value to the side, so MB, VB is equals to 3 times 2 that would be 6 so 6 minus by 3 times 0 0.4 that would be 1.2 so 6 minus 1.2 that would be 4.8 so mbvb is actually 4.8 so i'm gonna let mb be the subject so it is 4.8 divided by VB, and I let this be equation 1. All right, because two unknowns equivalent to two equations. So this is the first equation. I need to solve it simultaneously. So I need to get another equation out. So we have already solved uh, the first part, which is the conservation of momentum, whereby total momentum before is equal to total momentum after. But that will lead us to uh, MB equals to 4.8 over M, uh, VB, because we have two unknowns, which is the mass of trolley B and also the final velocity of trolley B. So 
when we have two unknowns, as mentioned earlier, we need two equations to solve it in math. So from two equations, we can solve it simultaneously. So the second equation we will get out using the total kinetic energy conserved, which means the total kinetic energy, total Ke stands for kinetic energy before the collision is equals to the total kinetic energy after the collision. So total Ke after so in this particular case, I'm using the symbol K for kinetic energy, so the kinetic energy of trolley A plus the kinetic energy of trolley B before the collision is equal to the kinetic energy of trolley A after the collision plus the kinetic energy of trolley B after the collision. So kinetic energy's formula is half of mv squared. So over here, 1 over 2, ma ua squared plus 1 over 2 mb v oh sorry ub square equals to 1 over 2 m a v a square plus 1 over 2 m b v b square now from my past experience as a teacher students always have a tendency to ignore the subscript if you were to ignore the subscript then you would you wouldn't know which uh, object you are actually trying to substitute the value in trolley a or trolley b so i always always remind students to write your formula properly and to make sure that you write the subscript included so only then i will know that i am substituting the values for trolley a or trolley b so here i'm going to substitute the values in so one over two mass of trolley a is three Initial velocity of trolley A is 2 square, remember the square for kinetic energy, yeah? plus 1 over 2 mass of trolley B, unknown initial velocity of trolley B is 0 square, equals to 1 over 2 mass of trolley A, which is 3, final velocity of A is 0 0.4 square, plus 1 over 2 mb v b squared now because we have a lot of values and calculation on hand so i'm not going to substitute equation one yet i'm going to solve all this so taking the calculator one over two three times two squared that will get a six plus this one because initial velocity of b is zero so this whole term goes to zero equals to one over two times three times zero point four times zero point four that will actually get a zero point two four Okay, plus 1 over 2 mbvb squared. So I'm going to take this mbvb squared and switch it over to the left hand side. mbvb squared equals to 6 minus 0 0.24. Now all I did is to switch the terms from left to right and right to left and I move the 0 0.24 to the other side which makes it to be 6 minus 0 0.24 so after that I will get uh, 6 minus 0 0.24 and I will get 5.76 5.76 so I'm going to throw the 2 over to the other side times 2 so I will leave with mbvb square here okay so I have uh, 11 0.52 so here then only i substitute mb so i'm going to put a bracket vb square so mb from equation one is 4.8 vb so vb square is actually vb times bb so i'm going to cancel off the vb with a square therefore vb is equals to 11.52 divided by 4.8 and by pressing your calculator, we will get the answer to be 2.4 meter per second. And you would notice that the value is actually positive value, means that uh, VB is actually moving towards the right hand side as shown in the picture uh, on top, all right, over here. Okay, so that is actually for question number one. All right, so that is an uh, example of questions for elastic collision. So we're going to go into inelastic collision type of questions. I'm going to screenshot a question right now. And this time there is no picture. So we need to have a graphical model 
all right, of the situation. So this is my question. Let me bring that up a bit. Okay, now first thing first, as usual, problem solving skill step one is to analyze the question and to change the words into symbol. And also step two is to have a graphical model. So let's have a analyze that question first. Okay, so the car travels at a velocity of 32 meters per second, collides head on with a lorry, moving at a velocity of 17 meters per second. If the mass of the car and the trolley is 1,200 kg and 5,500 kg respectively, question 1, calculate the momentum of the car before the collision. Question 2, calculate the total momentum. And question 3 is the final velocity of both vehicles after collision, if the collision is in elastic. So right now, let's go and try to draw a graphical model first. Okay, so I'm going to draw before collision, all right, because at the beginning, it haven't mentioned uh, one thing. So before collision, we have a car, okay, this is the headlight, okay, so we have a car moving forward at a initial velocity of the car to be 32 meter per second. As you notice that I draw the car first, so I assume that the car is moving towards the right and the mass of the car, wait first. Then after that, we have a lorry. So I'm going to draw this a big huge lorry over here. The headlight is here. So this is the lorry coming. Head on collision means that it's coming from opposite direction. So the initial velocity of the lorry, I label it as UL is a uh, 17 meter per second now because the lorry and the car is a head-on collision so the lorry's direction is negative okay so after collision because the question says if the collision is elastic aftr so i assume that the car and also the lorry would move will stick together okay so uh, because I have no idea which direction they will go, so I will just assume, okay? I will just assume that uh, it is moving towards the right. Okay, this is the final velocity. So whether is it a positive or negative direction, we have no idea. It will only be proven when we calculate it. So let's calculate the first question. Now, uh, one more thing that we have to do before we start our calculation is to write out all the all the information is given. So the mass of the car is 1,200 kg. All right. Mass of the lorry is 5,500 kg. Then initial velocity of the car is actually 32 meter per second. And the initial velocity of the lorry is negative 17 meter per second. Okay. So over here, the first question A, right? I need to shift my working a little bit. So, okay, I've already shifted that. I hope all of you can see. All right, so question A is asking for a uh, total momentum. Okay, hopefully you can see the question. Okay, so the mo sorry. Question A is actually asking for momentum of the car before the collision. So momentum of the car before collision is m car u car. So mass of the car is uh, 1200 multiplied by initial velocity of the car, which is 32. So let me get my calculator, 1200 times by 32. That would be 38,400 kg m s negative one all right so that would be the any the momentum of the car before the collision all right next we are going to find the total momentum all right in order to find total momentum okay i'm going to shift this a little bit up okay so in order to calculate total momentum question b all right is to find the total momentum before collision so total momentum all right is equals to the total momentum before the collision so we have momentum of the car and the momentum of the lorry so over here momentum of the car plus momentum of the lorry 
momentum of the car already calculated from the top, which is 3, uh, 38,400. So I'm not going to recalculate that. Plus momentum of the lorry, which is mass of the lorry. Mass of the lorry, let's move up a little bit. Mass of the lorry is 5,500. Okay, 5,000. 5,500 multiplied by initial velocity of the lorry, which is negative 17 meter per second. So 38,400 38, minus by 5,500 times by 17, we get 93500. Okay, so that actually gives us let me move my slide a bit. Okay, so minus by 38,000. That will give us negative 55,100 kg ms negative 1. So that's the total momentum before collision. So let's go to the next question. Next question asks us to find the final velocity of the two vehicles after collision if the collision is inelastic. Alright, so it is inelastic, therefore, okay, in order to solve this question, part C, okay, we know that conservation for inelastic collision, it uh, the total momentum is conserved but the total kinetic energy is not conserved. So we can't use uh, total kinetic energy before equals to total kinetic energy after. Therefore, we can only use conservation of momentum, whereby the total momentum before the collision, right, total momentum before the collision is equals to the total momentum after collision. Okay, total momentum after collision. Now we know the total momentum before collision already which is negative 55,100 right that we calculated from the previous question but total momentum after the collision we have to go back to the diagram and see that in this particular case the car and the lorry is sticking to each other so the total momentum for it after the collision is whereby the momentum of the car and the uh, lorry is together so over here uh, i will put it as mass of the car plus mass of the lorry multiplied by final velocity v okay all right some students will be thinking why is this equation like this because the mass of uh, sorry the car and the lorry is moving together all right so that's the reason why uh, we put it both together also Okay, so which means that, okay, for here, I'm going to switch this around. So I have mass of car plus mass of lorry multiplied by final velocity V, negative 55,100. So V is equals to negative, I'm going to move this a little bit, 55, oops. 55, 100 over mass of the car. Okay, mass of the car is 1,200 plus mass of the lorry, which is 5,500 equals negative 55, 100 over 1,200 plus 5,500. So that would be 6,700 using this equation, negative 55, 100 divided by 6,700. I will get the answer to be negative 8.22 meter per second. All right, so as you can see, we actually get a value of negative 8 meter per uh, negative 8.22 meter per second so this actually means that the car and the lorry is moving towards the left hand side direction so that is actually what we predicted in the first case all right what i predicted is that both car and lorry is actually moving towards the left hand side so the answer would be negative all right so that is what i predicted and that is how i solved the question for inelastic collision 
All right, so that's all for the question. So let's go to the third question. So for the third question, I'm going to take a question of uh, explosion. Okay, so I have a question of explosion. So I'm going to, again, I'm going to copy it and paste the question here. Okay. So in this particular question, it is written that I have a rifle, all right, a rifle fires a bullet of 10 gram at a velocity of 300 meter per second. If the mass of the rifle is 7.5 kg, calculate the recoil speed of the rifle. Okay, so over here, let me draw out what I think actually happened. Okay, instead of a rifle, which is actually quite a long one, I'm just going to draw a simple gun. Alright, so before collision, to represent the rifle, so before collision, I have a bullet inside the rifle, both of it at rest. So after collision, okay, we have the gun moving backwards, that's the recoil, and the bullet actually moves in front. Okay, so the initial velocity of the rifle and the initial velocity of the bullet is the same, which is actually at rest, 0 meter per second. But after the collision, or more to be precise, after the explosion, the bullet, uh, sorry, the rifle's velocity is moving towards the right hand side, towards the left hand side, sorry while the bullet's velocity, final velocity, is moving towards the right-hand side at a value of 300 meter per second. Now, the mass of the, mass of the uh, bullet here, okay, mass of the bullet is actually 10 gram, so I'm going to convert that to kg, 10 divided by 1000, I get 0 0.01 kg. It's important that if it's uh, not in the SI unit, you have to change the values to SI unit. Uh. Mass of the rifle is given to you in 7.5 kg. Okay. Initial velocity is 0. The final velocity of the bullet is 300 meter per second. And final velocity of the rifle is the one that we want to find. Now, um, for explosion case, actually explosion is similar to inelastic collision, whereby the total momentum is conserved, but the total kinetic energy is not conserved. So over here, in order to solve an explosion question, we have to use conservation of momentum. All right. So in order to solve this, so we have total momentum before the collision. is equals to the total momentum after the collision. Now, total momentum, uh, sorry, before the collision, the rifle and the bullet is together. So over here, this is mass of the rifle plus mass of the bullet multiplied by its initial velocity u, u not ub, initial velocity u, which is equals to the momentum after which is momentum of the rifle, MR, VR, plus with the momentum of the bullet, MB, VB. Now, because this term, the initial velocity is zero, so I rearrange this equation, I will get MR, VR equals to negative and B, B, B. Okay, let me move my whiteboard up. Okay, so I have a habit of putting it as the subject first. So we are finding VR, therefore VR is negative and B, V, B over M, R. So then only I substitute the values in, that would be negative 0.01 times VB, which is 300, divided by MR, which is 7.5.
Now, this is the reason why I like to list out the values because once I've listed out all the values on top at the one side, it's easy for me to substitute it in. Okay, so pressing the calculator, 0 0.01 times 300 divided by 75, okay, 7.5. So I actually get the value of negative 0 0.4 meter per second and don't be afraid of the negative sign because the negative sign actually says the direction of the rifle moving towards the left like what we have already drawn here so that is actually how we solve a question related to elastic collision inelastic collision and also explosion all right, so I hope with this uh, method of solving, showing to all of you, you'll be able to understand how to solve the question. So if you have any questions you want to ask me, drop me a comment, all right? And uh, if you would like me to proceed on to do this kind of video, remember to click like, hit the subscribe button, and also switch on the notification. So that's all for my video. Till the next time, bye everyone.